Hello friends, welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson. I'm the lead pastor at Jerome Church, and I'm so pleased that you've joined us for our continuing series, Glimpses of the Kingdom. In this series, we're looking at concrete ways to help us see the kingdom of God lived out within the body of Christ. Let's join together now in worship and praise. Church. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship, you can use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on to share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to our Connect card, signups for upcoming events, 
worship videos and resources, kids and family resources, and our online giving to support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Today, we are continuing our series called Glimpses of the Kingdom. So let's hear today's message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Oftentimes when I'm reading scripture, I find lots of things that make me joyful, but occasionally I find something or look at something and I read it and I read it again and it makes me feel bad. And, and the reason it makes me feel bad is in some cases it feels like it's challenging me to achieve something that, that I think is impossible. Now, sometimes if I understand that that impossibility uh, is unless I lean into Christ, then, then I'm okay with that. But other times, I, even I have been taught uh, that scriptures have one meaning when they really have another. And today's scripture passage is one of those that has been used as kind of a measuring key for folks to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And that's not really what it's about. It's not a checklist of things you have to achieve, but instead it's a list of blessings of how to live a Christian life after the fact of, of this is what the kingdom looks like. And now that you've accepted Christ into your life, you can live this life and be happy now. Now it makes me sad to think this has been used in an improper way, but I'm happy to present this in a new way. And so I'm actually talking about a section of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, often called the Beatitudes. So let's hear these words now from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, and blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, living the kingdom life here and now, bringing the body together, that's what this message is. Uh, of the Beatitudes is about. Jesus teaches us that if we live according to the Beatitudes, we will live a happy Christian life. He even uses the term sometimes blessed are those, but the, use, the word blessed are those in Greek is makarioi, which can also be translated as happy. You've probably seen that before in other translations, happy are those who. It can even be translated as blissful blessed. So let's take a look at each one of these meanings. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When it's talking about poor in spirit, it's talking about poverty, but it's not necessarily a physical poverty. It's talking about a spiritual condition of poverty. It describes a person who recognizes their need for God. The kingdom of heaven refers to people who acknowledge God as king. One who is poor in spirit knows that they are spiritually bankrupt apart from Jesus Christ. And it's acknowledging that, that we are spiritually bankrupt without Christ. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Those who express deep sorrow over sin and repent of their sins are those who mourn. 
The freedom found in forgiveness of sin and the joy of eternal salvation is the comfort of those who repent, the turning away from our broken, sinful nature and realigning and heading towards God, heading towards the kingdom through Christ. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. This speaks to those who submit to God's authority and make him Lord. They imitate Christ in their lives. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. When it speaks to the words hunger and thirst, uh, that's those who show a deep need or passion to be filled with Christ and our soul's true desire for salvation found through Christ. And so our, that we will be filled as we seek, we hunger and we thirst for that righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. This speaks to those who demonstrate mercy will receive mercy. Likewise, those who have received great mercy will show great mercy. Mercy is shown through kindness, forgiveness, and compassion towards others. And we as Christians have received the greatest mercy of them all by God not giving us what we do deserve, which is eternal separation from God, damnation. And instead, God has given us what we don't deserve, the free gift of grace shown through the life, death, witness, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have received that great mercy, and therefore we should show great mercy through forgiveness and kindness and compassion towards others. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This speaks to those who have been cleansed from within. Uh, this is not an outward righteousness that can be seen by people, but an inward holiness that only God can see. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. It is a peace and a freedom beyond anything that humanity can give us through governments, through powers and principalities. And our reconciliation through Christ brings restored fellowship, which is peace with God. That is an ultimate peace. And because of that peace, because of the sacrifice of Christ shown through the life, witness, death, and resurrection, through that gift on the cross, we have been restored, and through Christ, we have been adopted into the family known as Christians. We have become heirs of God, children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Reconciliation through Christ brings restored fellowship with God. And then blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Those daring enough to openly live for Christ and suffer all that may come with that. Those who live a, a beatitude lifestyle, something that is very much anti-society, goes against the grain many times. We will be insulted. We will be uh, persecuted. False things will be said about you. Yet we will live a happy life knowing that we have, uh, even in those moments of persecution, given ourselves fully to God and openly live for Christ, willing to pay the consequences for that. Friends, Jesus' Beatitudes aren't sta are, are statements of grace, but they are not law. These are not things that you have to do to achieve the kingdom of heaven. That battle has been won. Our faith in God's grace is enough for salvation, shown through the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus 
is saying this is how each of us can live individually and corporately in a Christian community, not to earn the keys or entrance to the kingdom of heaven, but to live happy now as Christian, to have kingdom moments now. We have discussed in the past weeks how we are the best representation as the church, even with all our brokenness, that we are the best representation of the kingdom that is to come. We can represent the kingdom now by living out beatitude lives, lives that bring us happiness and joy, the life that Christ calls us to, expressing these realities of the kingdom of heaven here and now, a kingdom that was and is and is to come here on earth. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It is good to be with you again in worship today. Today we're continuing our new series as we explore how the kingdom of God can be lived out in tangible and concrete ways within the body of Christ. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore the opportunities in the app, including upcoming events and ways to volunteer in a local mission or ways to grow deeper in your faith by participating in a class or study. Some upcoming opportunities include volunteering for Upward Sports Game Days every Saturday through February joining the planning team for our spring craft fair, or taking a step outside of our community to serve on a mission trip to Tennessee with our youth this summer. You can also grow in your faith by joining in our Bible in a year reading plan, or register your seventh through 12th grader for our upcoming confirmation class that begins in February. You can learn more about all of these opportunities and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave to us to love God and love people, and you can support the missions and ministries of this church by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description, on the Jerome Church website, or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms and in the Church Center app. And know that we look forward to worshiping with you next week as we continue our worship series together. Have a blessed week, friends.